Hello everybody! So today I'm going to talk about a very odd plant called the toothache plant. And the toothache plant is, um, well, it has a reputation. This is a plant where the leaves, and especially the flowers, it will actually like numb your mouth. And this is something that people use medicinally as you know, as the name suggests for toothaches. So if you have a toothache, you can actually rub this flower on your tooth and it's supposed to numb it. Or if you have a really bad toothache, you can like just chew on it and it'll like numb out your whole mouth. I don't really like going into medicinal things on this channel. Uh, I think there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that... Oh. So that cut right there... <laughs> was because I just wiped my eye and I think I transferred some of that numbing whatever onto my eye. So I thought I got something in my eye, but I think I just like numbed part of my eye and it feels weird right now. I didn't even realize I still had it on my fingers, but I, you know, I did wash it just a second ago. So yeah, I must have carried some of that chemical compound onto my eye. Let's hope I don't go blind during this review. Uh, yeah, be careful. Uh, this thing is powerful. It's very powerful. And um, yeah, I don't like what I was going to say <laughs> is I don't like going into medicinal things on this channel. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there where people give health advice even though they have no health background whatsoever, which is like a very like reckless thing to do, especially to people who might need help. Uh, so I don't like going into that. I like focusing on the culinary uses. And that's something that I don't see a whole lot of information out there about, but this is used. Not so much the flower, but more the leaf. The leaf can be shredded up and used raw, and it's also cooked with and put into like soups. So let's try a little piece of the leaf. I'm just gonna break off the tip of it. Oh, very similar uh, to how Szechuan peppercorns will make your tongue tingle. This is doing that. It's not in a bad way, though. Uh, it's milder than Szechuan pepper, especially uh, fresh Szechuan pepper. I think I like the flavor of Szechuan pepper better because that's got like a citrus, uh, fruity kind of flavor uh, with that sort of numbing sensation. This one is more leafy. This is like parsley with that numbing sort of sensation. I believe they're two different chemical compounds, but it is very similar. And Szechuan pepper also makes you kind of like salivate and gives you a little bit of like a salty sort of flavor. This does that too. I can see using a little bit of this, slicing it up and putting it in a salad, uh, and it'll give you like a little bit of like a perk when you're, when you're eating it. I think that would actually be kind of fun. Um, in moderation. Uh, cooking with it, sure, it would go well with anything that you'd want to use uh, like Szechuan pepper with. They put it in like a miso soup or something, it'd be kind of cool. I'm gonna delay eating this uh, this flower here because it is intimidating. It's a very odd looking thing and it looks like something that can hurt you. Like a little demon eyeball. So here's a fun fact for you. In India, they use this plant in chewing tobacco to kind of like give you more of a salivation while you're while you're chewing it. That's fun. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like combined with like betel nut because like why not? If you're already going to be producing copious amounts of red saliva you might as well throw this in there and have even more, right? Alright, so I've, I've put it off long enough. I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, first, what people have said is that you can just actually rub the bud on your tooth to help with the toothache. So, um, I don't have a toothache, so I'm just gonna like lick it. Yeah, that didn't do anything for me. Um, rubbing this on my tongue did not numb my tongue. So I'm gonna take a little bite. Oh, I feel that coming. So before I completely numb out my mouth, the flavor on that. Oh, too late. That is exactly like Szechuan pepper when I had it unripe and fresh. Like, this is like what I imagine 
taking like a swig of laundry detergent would be like. Just like you have like a chemical in your mouth that may or may not be like eating away at your tongue. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend that I'm drinking water. But actually be spitting in there. I just took a little bite. If you ate that whole thing, you might get sick. So you might throw up or something. I wouldn't recommend eating an entire one. Um, yeah, this is like almost identical to my reaction to raw, unripe Szechuan peppercorns. My tongue is vibrating. Um, everything is tingling. Initially, it does not taste like salt, but as you start salivating, you get this flavor of salt, which makes me think that that salt taste is coming from my body, not from that plant. One thing I should point out is that the numbing sensation that you have is not like the numbing sensation you have when you go to the dentist and they like give you Novocaine. I don't feel like that. Maybe like a little bit of like actual numbness. It's more tingling and salivating than it is numbing. If you were to have a toothache and chew on this thing, uh, yeah, I guess it would help by numbing it, but it's gonna be with this very strong adverse reaction of just like gushing saliva everywhere. I can see maybe using the tincture of this like some people do and like applying it right on the gums around your tooth. But if you take a bite out of it, it's going to affect your whole mouth. So in Brazil, this is called, uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be a, not, probably not pronouncing that J, right? Yeah, so hambo is what this is called. And there is a popular alcohol, Cachaca de Hambo. So that is a rum that is infused with this. And people like it because not only does it give you, you know, the high alcohol content of this rum, but also gives you like this crazy sensation at the same time. I'm gonna buy some rum, I'm gonna put those heads in it, and we're gonna see what happens. If anything, it might be an interesting like flavoring on something. I think that maybe use it like a Szechuan-y kind of flavor. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Uh, so we're gonna skip forward to another day. Well, there they are, like little cotton balls swimming around in alcohol. And um, it got a lot darker, that's for sure. And um, I feel like they got a little puffier. I feel like the little toothache plant heads got a little bit, a little bit bigger, like it absorbed the uh, alcohol. Yep. I'm afraid of this. I am absolutely terrified. Um, it's probably gonna be pretty strong. And I also don't drink, so it's like a little odd for me just for that reason. And uh, yeah, let's see. I know what rum tastes like just from having like rum flavored things, but I have a feeling this isn't going to uh, taste like rum. Holy mother of God. It's kind of like olives, but sweet, like olives and honey. I'm gonna just dip my finger in there and touch it to my tongue. I'm kind of afraid to put my finger in it. All right. My finger is not numb. There it is. It's not so strong putting what I did, a couple drops, <laughs> on my finger and touching it to my tongue. I feel it tingling on the tip of my tongue. It's not numb, but it's tingly the way that like Szechuan spice is tingly, as I said. But um, yeah, if you were to take like a spoon of that, a teaspoon, and swish that around your mouth, your mouth would entirely feel, feel that. Although it smells like molasses. It kind of tastes like molasses, but it's not really sweet tasting. It just kind of has that like strong, mellow kind of flavor that uh, molasses has just without the sugar. And it's a little olivey. The olive thing is kind of kind of strange. 
So it tastes kind of like how it smells, just not sweet. Yeah, so for medicinal benefits or whatever, I guess uh, this does something. I mean, it definitely tingles. It doesn't really feel like Novocaine kind of numbing, but maybe that tingling on a, on a sore tooth will be like a pleasant distraction from it. Or at the very least, it's gonna, you know, give you alcohol and it'll kind of numb the pain a little bit, right? What interests me more than medicine, though, is that people drink this. Uh, probably not as concentrated as this is, uh, but people will take a shot of it and it's a way to get, like, your alcohol uh, buzz, but also, like, an actual physical buzz from that plant. Pretty sure that if I uh, took a shot of just the rum, with no toothache plant in there, just rum on its own, it would probably get me sick. I'm going to treat this kind of like a, like an extract. You know, like vanilla extract is just vanilla pods and alcohol. So I'm going to try making something with this and just see what happens. And uh, my initial thought is like um, a alcohol sort of thing, something where you want to use the flavor of rum. So I'm going to make White Russian popsicles. That's a good idea, right? With this in it. So let's call it something else. It's not going to be the white Russian. It's going to be the uh, the numb Russian. days and I pulled my popsicles out of the freezer and here's something um, that I learned today alcohol kind of affects uh, freezing that's a thing right yeah people put like alcohol in the freezer and it doesn't freeze right so when you put alcohol in popsicles this happens <laughs> it froze but not the way that I was kind of hoping that it would I have no idea what this is gonna be like <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of it the alcohol flavor is definitely there. Maple syrup is there. The milk is there. I'm not really getting the the tingle though. It tastes pretty good, but since I'm making a video specifically about the toothache plant, and I can't really get the toothache plant flavor, uh, I don't know. I mean, let me try a bit more. Maybe it'll it'll hit me. I don't know if it's because I'm eating more of it, or if maybe it's sunk to the bottom, but I'm feeling a little bit more now. I thought this would be like, you take a bite out of it, it's like, whoa, like, gives you like an extreme reaction. So, that didn't work out exactly how I was hoping it would, but it did work a little bit. <laughs> it flavored it, but it didn't flavor it in a way that is negative, which is what I was worried about, that would give it like an herbal sort of flavor or something. And it does give a tingly reaction, but not as much as I was hoping. So I think in order to get what I was hoping for, you'd have to make not regular popsicles with some extract in it, but you'd have to make boozy popsicles. Um, or actually, better yet, not popsicles, because that doesn't work. Uh, boozy ice cream, or icy, or whatever. Uh, if you were to do that, it would have more of a kick. You would get that tingle for sure. So this is something that I think, with a little bit of playing around, you could get some pretty interesting results with uh, the culinary world. Like, using this plant not just to rub it on your sore tooth, but to actually make something out of it that um, tastes good and gives you like this kind of interesting reaction. Uh, it's kind of nifty. It's kind of nifty to have something that has such a strong effect to it, and I think there is definitely a use there. So I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day, AltPod, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. If you haven't heard of it, Patreon.com is it's how this channel happens. It's how I can afford to keep this YouTube channel going. So if you haven't checked it out, please take a moment to go into the description below and click the link there. Uh, I also have t-shirts for sale over at my web store. A link to that is in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.